Hello everyone, welcome back to Reimagine 2020 V4. I'm Roshan Rajkar, one of your hosts for this event. And, you know, going on with our Halloween theme, that's why I'm dressed like this. Uh, I'm an astronaut, I'm trying to go to the moon. Uh, I'm very excited to be joined here by the co-founder of Rarible, Alexander Sal uh, Salnikov. Uh, Alexander, thank you so much for joining me here today. And, you know, there's been a lot of excitement around NFTs uh, in the past month, even more so than the preceding month. So I just want to ask you, you know, how has this virtual time been for you and your team? And uh, what have you all been working on? Um, and then we can sort of get into knowing you and your story. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm happy to be here. I don't have a, a, a Halloween out, outfit. I believe for the last month is the same outfit for me. I literally wear the company t-shirt every day, uh, getting out. Yeah, my, my work schedule these two past two months is like from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Uh, it's a little crazy, but I managed to, to be cool with it. Uh, I have from five to 10 calls each day and some time to, to work on stuff, to experiment, to innovate in my mind. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not complaining. Definitely, I enjoy this so much. It's, it's, it's a beautiful time to be in. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, that's how it is for a lot of the people in the crypto blockchain space. Like crypto is 24 seven. Uh, we got to sleep for some portion of it, but for the most part, you wake up and there's a hundred different updates. Um, yeah, I think Rarible is this really exciting, cool new platform, you know, where you can create a lot of uh, NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And I think there's a lot of uh, new, exciting developments recently. But before we get into that, uh, I kind of want to know, you know, where did you come up with this idea? How long have you been work, working in the crypto space? Um, and yeah, how, you know, how, where did this all start? Because I think right now we see the uh, end, end result or the, the progression of what's happening, but I'm sure you, it, you didn't just pop up with this idea. Or maybe you did, I'm not sure. Well, uh, it, it's a long story. Uh, I'll start from, from me launching the viral project during my first year of education in the university. I'm a technical person, by the way. I studied computer science, and after the after twenty thousand people uh, per, just like visited the website that I created uh, in a day, I decided that I probably want to build something, and and I switched to the building products, and I found my passion back in two thousand twelve. It was crypto. It it promised me the whole new world of like self sovereignty. So it just, I'm a technical person. I know that I have this digital signature and if, if I will be able to, to sign the transaction, I will always be in the custody of these funds. Uh, and, and this is the powerful idea, I believe, uh, behind which all the, all the crypto community gathered at some point and still gathering here. So since then, I've been building a lot of stuff. We, we built a trading robot. And, and a simple off-ramp and on-ramp for crypto locally here. Then we moved to build a centralized exchange, a lot of mathematics from scratch. All great opportunities, all great experience. We acquired the talented team. And I believe NFTs, it was just this last summer we thought to, okay, in 2017, we with my team were doing ERC-20 issuance platform. So we help people issue their ERC-20 tokens. It was a hell of a time back then. So much, so many projects launched and there was so many news about what's going on in Ethereum and so, so buzzy. Uh, I kind of felt a little bit out of the space for a while because it was overcrowded. Mm, and and then at some point, suddenly I realized that there are actually a lot of cool projects, like they're live on Ethereum, they're working great, and they're, they're helping people to, to cover their real life needs, to take a loan. That's what people do. And uh, all throughout all my, my experience with blockchain, I, I had this idea that there's two problems in crypto. The first one is that market is small. Like, like you know, there is no many people in crypto. 
comparing to the you know, single mobile app successful on the App Store. And the second problem is that crypto is really difficult. It's really a, a big idea to cross. So um, just the mass audience, mass market, uh, probably uh, probably doesn't want to to pay a lot of attention there because uh, you get closer uh, sometimes. Uh, and that, not that it, it's it's a bad idea, but it's just it's 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 an economy of attention now. If it requires a lot of attention, if it's a hard learning curve, you probably would skip it. So that's why it's NFTs, because I believe an NFT standard is just what gives the all the people the sense of ownership, of ultimate ownership of, of the custody of something on blockchain that the, you truly own. Um, I believe NFTs give this sense to everyone. And it's it's a very digestible format Somebody referred to NFTs as just files that you can't copy. Uh, and I believe that's, that's one of the best ideas to think about NFTs. So it, it's, it's something ownable on chain and it's in your wallet. It has an image, it has a name and description and, and you own it, period, it's yours. It feels like a digital item. Uh, it, we didn't have digital items before we had copies yeah, it's you had multiple occurrence of why why are we paying for for why there is this copyright issue uh, that people somebody thinks that information should be free because it doesn't have a lot of friction to copy that so NFTs are are an answer to all of that you don't own right now anything on the internet all your data or your files or your accounts your emails they are in custody of the big companies. You can't move your music library from Apple to Spotify or, or backwards. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you can't move your email address from, from Google to Mail, to Apple Mail. Uh, and it's, it's just a little bit wrong. Not that it's a very bad thing that company owns it. It's just it's the lack of interoperability. So NFTs and blockchain in general, they move this ownership level closer to the user. So at first it's your data, and then you decide who you will share it with, who you will give it to, which platform would you sell it on, what, what, how many copies of that file would be, would be present. That's, that's the whole powerful idea behind NFTs. Yeah, you had a lot of uh, great quotes in there that I'm going to remember. And one of it, what you just said about uh, yeah, we haven't really had any digital items in the world and everything we own right now, you know, what you just said about you're just owning uh, like a copy of something. You're not actually owning the item itself. I think that that's really important. And, you know, I think shortly here, definitely want to get into some of the new updates. But but real quick, can you explain to everyone, uh, you know, when you're buying one of these NFTs, let's say on your platform, like I think a lot of people kind of limited to thinking that it's only just an image and you're just, they don't really understand why you're owning an image. Can you kind of go into like, what are some interesting use cases that people are using NFTs on your platforms for? Like, um, can you own other, other items that are tagged to the image? Like what else can you do with these NFTs? People don't understand that, you know, what can you do with them? I, let me start at first from the, general use cases for NFTs, not on the platform of, uh, of ours. So uh, one, one again, easily digestible one that I like a lot is ENS domain names. So you've probably seen on the internet that someone has uh, like something like Vitalik.eth instead of his Ethereum address. That's the domain name that can be resolved as an address that is tied to an address. So this domain name is the same as apple.com domain name that somebody owns. And all the ownership of those domain names right now are, is represented through NFTs. So you can go to the marketplace and, and shop for domain names and they will represent it as NFTs. After you purchase it, it will be in your wallet. If you put, if you import the seed phrase to another wallet, it will be in another wallet. So all the same. And so NFT is just building block. It's it's a standard in which you can represent some things that's ownable on chain. So crypto kitties, uh, how NFT was born. Uh, it's not an image of a kitty. It's actually the DNA of a kitty. The, the whole idea was about breeding kitties, not just displaying them. 
and and again you had this key to you had two, two keys and you could create a new one so it's it's when when you ask like what what can somebody do with nfts it's, it's the same as ask what can somebody do with tokens with erc20 tokens so actually whatever you want is just nfts are representing something something whole not fractionalized usually so uh a cdp uh, that's a, that from from the DeFi. when when you have a loan and collateral it all looks like a box in which you can put money and put some collateral and then take this money out this box is not is ownable. You can transfer the ownership of that box to somebody else. That's why it can be represented as NFT. Recently, there was a big spike of wine insurance. Um, basically, Yorn project introduced Nexus Mutual insurance covers wrapped into NFT, and you could sell the insurance as NFT. There, there was a wrapped CryptoPunk that and uh, the old OG style CryptoPunk that was wrapped into NFT to sell it. So the possibilities are just limitless. There, there will be much more new stuff done with NFT. And it's just a great standard that forces you to think about how the user will perceive that. So this image on top of NFT, it's not this, the, the NFT itself. NFT itself is the ownership of something. And this image is just, a, is just to help you understand like what you truly own here. So when you say the crypto art, the probably value itself is not in the image, but in the record that some prominent address known as crypto artist created this something and you then bought it. That's, that's the value of crypto art. And, and there is an image on top so you, you can associate like what you, what you actually bought. So, so in another sense, you can, you can perceive NFTs as, as a liquid IP rights. So you, it, it's an ownership rights. You, you can license them to somebody else. Uh, you, and, and basically when you buy it, you, you, you get the license to, to, to use the image. Well, we are going to go into this a little bit deeper uh, further down the road with wearable because and we want to make it completely legal. When you would buy an NFT, you would buy the real rights to the image to use it commercially, non-commercially, or anyhow else. So uh, I, I'm trying to abstract away the image itself, but the image is, is very powerful. It just gives you a, 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 an understanding that what's, what's inside. And it can even be changed. So you can create an NFT with image that will change over time. Uh, there, there was, I believe there was an NFT recently sold on Christie's auction. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, for $120,000 that was uh, representing the change of day and night uh, corresponding to the, uh, to the time zone. So it's programmable. Uh, NFT, again, it, it's very easy to lose yourself when, when you think about them, but in the end, it's just the digital item. You can, you can put anything inside it and, and, and it will be good. Uh, I, I didn't cover like specific use cases a lot, I believe, but I, I, just, I, I just think the whole idea is very powerful. And in use cases, we, we want to see a lot of new of them. Yeah, no, actually what, what you just said ha has me thinking and I think you explained it in, in a great format because a lot of people don't understand them because they are very concentrated on the image itself. They're like it, either the image is not high resolution or um, it's not in the full branded content that you might get elsewhere. But I think you put it in the exact in the exact right way, which is it's all about um, the, the ownership. And, I, and, you know, thanks for covering what you all are going to do in the future as well because what i was going to ask you now you know related to um, licensing and sort of the strength of your community um, is i think you all have a very unique uh, place your platform in the crypto world because a lot of these other applications people compare them always to the traditional finance or a lot of the larger players it seems that things like nfts um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't see, seem that many of the traditional competitors, like uh, there's the platforms like Super Rare as well, we're talking to them as well. 
And what they've said is they're actually more open to collaborating uh, with a lot of the giants in the traditional space. So can you speak a little bit about, you know, why do you, why do you, th do you think that the people that are in your community are more crypto native people? Or do you think that it's just artists who are uh, coming on board because you can create an NFT on your, on your platform very quickly? Um, because I think there are a lot of problems, as you mentioned, surrounding um, the ownership. And also one thing I think that's super cool that you're already enabling on your platform is in 2017, people always talked about tokenizing art and, you know, letting the original um, creator of the art get, get a continuous, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, get a continuous royalty, right? It's like people like Picasso, they only got rich uh, like after they die. And I think that's one theme in the art world. Like a lot of the value of, of art, it gets rich like later on. And then the original creator, it doesn't go to them. So can you speak a little bit about why do you think your community is so so rare? And yeah, who, who do you see joining your, your community? Do you think it's different? Uh, than the people that are, you know, staking crazy amounts of money on platforms uh, like DeFi, because I see a lot of creation going on in, in your platform. Let me then probably start. I'm breaking up a little. Uh, can you hear me well? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, can we cut that out? Uh, yep, go ahead. Okay. To answer this question, I'll probably start with the whole idea of Verbal, how it was put together, how it was created, uh, to, to give you a sense of what's in the DNA of a company. So uh, again, about a year ago, we, we were brainstorming how can we make the NFT world better. And NFT is so nascent, it's so early, there will be a lot of new stuff coming up with NFTs. So what, that was the idea. Let's create a platform when anybody would be able to create a new NFT out of nowhere, just from with, with several clicks, upload an image, um, give it a name, and set up your, your, his account and sell it right away with, with just one form. It was two pages, create NFT and sell NFT. And this idea basically paid very well. Uh, that was probably um, the first occurrence of of this. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll give a pause here. And that idea paid well. Um, artists starts, started to use the platform. Uh, they, they started coming on board. They started creating uh, items. They, they, we put a lot of effort into creating great UI, UI and UX for the platform so that it's easily understandable for everyone. Connect your wallet, click through several buttons, and you're done. We, we've done it. People come on, came on board and started creating. We wanted our users to experiment. What will be the use case for NFTs? But we didn't, we didn't even originally tie it to the art world. Uh, we, we thought about various stuff. We thought about charity. So you can create an NFT and then people would buy it and to give you money that would be donated somewhere then and they would receive a, a badge of gratitude for that, for the donation. Or we wanted some, some projects to create NFTs for the prominent member of their community and brand them with the original NFTs did by maker, let's say. Uh, and there was, there was a lot of stuff in mind and the crypto art is really paid, paid well, is really taking off just because it perceives NFT as an asset class. You can really hold it and uh, when you're buying it, in the, you, you have rights to it so you can then resell the, the item. That's, that's the whole powerful idea about crypto art. So uh, uh, creators right now on the internet, they have not many ways to sell their content. They can sell prints, and that's probably the main way that creators monetize their work right now. Or they can uh, create something public and then, and then just get some paid jobs out of their brands to, to create something for somebody. So there is not much way to monetize the digital content that you created. Or let's say you're a blogger. 
you, you put yourself, you put a lot of great content on your social profile and then you monetize it by, by, by selling advertisement from your, from your account to, to the subscriber base. So again, the, the, the whole ownership level on, on the internet is broken. Now you can't really monetize your digital content. That's why we concentrate on creator community. They really give something new to the world. They create content, they, they explore new ideas, they, they, they are very passionate, they, they are great in combining some, several concepts, concepts into one. Um, that's that's why, why we work with them. Uh, we later introduced the unlockable feature. You could put something inside the work so that only the new owner of the NFT would be able to see it. Only new owner of NFT would be able to see High resolution photography that you supplied, or, or or I know backstage materials, how you created that. There are a lot of people again experimenting to put audio files, video files inside the unlockable feature, or even the instruction how you get the physical copy after you purchase it. So there is a lot of stuff that can be done, and and we are use case agnostic in that sense for for for. for for, for a long time, crypto art is, is the main feature right now. We, we've acquired the great community. They are so cool, but there is always like the broader picture. There's always the bigger picture of where we're going. Right now we look like a social network that with the marketplace in the same time. So, so you can follow artists, you can like their, their, their artwork. There is a leaderboard of the most popular artists for the day, week or month. Uh, a lot of people hate each other for, for, for that leaderboard, but it gets them competitive uh, to, to kind of climb it. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of just uh, features that we added. At some point, we added royalties. So that's very important stuff. Once you sold your work, the next person would benefit. If, you, if, you're, if your popularity rises, your artwork bec become more expensive. So that you probably want to have something like 10 percentage, 10 percent of the subsequent sales coming to you. And that's why we introduced flexible royalties. You can set whatever number you want, starting from zero to actually 100 percent. There was a there was a couple of experiments of 100 percent royalties coming to the original creator. So that it literally means that this item doesn't make sell that doesn't make sense to sell it because. Of it everything would go to the original author. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we are, we are trying to be flexible. We introduced new stuff. Uh, one again, one, one more, uh, another good example for, for what we introduced was multiple editions. So uh, let's say you have a great artwork that is very popular. And it would be pity if it would lay in only in one hands for forever. You probably want several copies of it, like like prints, but still to be limited. So people people wanted us to make it possible. They they just started creating several copies of of the same work with the different names, so like number one, number two, number three. And we introduced a new a new way for them to to just have additions. So right now you can create uh, any number of copies of your work uh, as you want, from starting from one to one billion works. Uh, it, it's just, I believe the best number for the um, quite popular art is from three to five pieces because uh, somebody can. Uh, so, so it's still limited, but quite scarce enough. Uh, so it, it would be probably sold out and then there will be a, a semi-liquid secondary market for it. That's, that's a great thing. Uh, I, I personally bought several, like a lot, probably most of the work that I bought are, are multiple editions because a single editions are usually expensive and, uh, well, I want other people to have it as well. I want them to show it. Uh, people are buying stuff and then uh, the whole big idea of exhibiting your work. You can put your NFT into the metaverse. There are, there are various number of games uh, made on Ethereum blockchain 
you could put NFTs into. So crypto voxel, decentralized, Somnium Space VR. I'm pretty sure I, I forgot to, to, to mention somebody else. You can actually take your work and and display it inside metaverse uh, display to really i didn't i didn't i didn't know you could do that so if i if i own my nfts i can i can import i can go on decentraland and i can show other people what i own that's actually really cool i don't think you can do this i don't think you can do this with the you know art piece that you just buy and maybe it's super expensive it just sits there on your wall so i think that's that's the main thing i'm getting from you right now that like you can't do any of these use cases you said with like traditional art so uh yeah no sorry sorry to interrupt you if you're uh, saying something keep going but it's yours it's i it's an item it's yours if there will be another game uh one of our artists is keeper Jant. uh he created uh he created items and he personally went and agreed with another game uh, so that you can import his his items into this, the specific game. Uh, so it, it's it's just layered. You, at first you have items, and then you can build anything on top of it. Metaverses are a great example. A lot of people are exhibiting art there. There in Somnium Space, there is an art gallery exhibiting three hundred thousand dollars worth of art. And it's in VR, full immersive. You can you can check around, you can get around and, and see the full picture. Uh, it's it's awesome, and we expect it to be much more cool later. Yeah, um, I think the approach that you all took about adding in all those social features, even small things like the leaderboard, is actually the right approach because I think a lot of platform, let's let's take DeFi for one example. Our last conference was actually on DeFi and I think it's really great, pretty, pretty exciting stuff. However, sometimes I think if you don't have a community behind it or if you don't have some of those uh, social features, then it's sort of just numbers happening on chain and you can't really do anything further. So I think that's why we've seen things like NFTs continue to um, grow. And I also think that it's also heavily retail based. I don't know if you'll agree with me here, but you know, th there, I understand there is a larger uh, art market, exclusive digital art market. But I think for the most part, like, like you definitely said, there's people all around the world, uh, freelancers, uh, people in third world countries that are very talented, but if they don't have access to the traditional means, um, it just takes too long. You know, I've used Rarible before and in about 20 minutes, um, pretty much anywhere in the world, you can upload an image and you can start to sell it. And someone, it doesn't matter where you are, if you have crypto, you log onto the platform and th that quickly you can transfer uh, the ownership, the license is the right. So I'm really excited to, you know, see the future uh, of Rarible and even other platforms of uh, what happens specifically with, with licensing. I think a lot of traditional platforms are kind of scared, scared of some of you guys, because it, I, I would say the reason why they don't have that community um, uh, of people in the beginning. And I think that's one thing crypto kind of does have. Once once you have community uh, of people, you know, even, um, uh, even things like what was, oh, Uniswap, right? You know, uh, what I kind of want to talk to you about now is I know that like on Rarible, it's not just about uh, creating art, licensing NFT. You all recently introduced the Rari token, right? Which is a governance token. Can you talk a little bit about um, why, why you all did this? I know it's a recent thing, but why did you all even roll this feature out and how would you compare it? To things on the level like Uniswap, because we saw what happened uh, when Uniswap rolled out, and just in general, I think it's amazing that we that the, you know this concept of rewarding people for being uh, loyal users, or it's just community building, right? Uh, I'm I'm super happy you mentioned that. So uh, from the Uniswap and Rarible perspective, I think the main comparison is we, all, we always 
we, we often refer to the Rare protocol as something like Uniswap for NFTs. So we recently introduced categories and you can sell, um, you, you could sell anything before, but uh, it was so mess, messed up. And now you have the separated place for that. You can sell your domain names, metaverses, digital land, anything that any NFT that you already own, you can sell it. So that uh, we, we often uh, think about the future of Rarible as Uniswap for NFTs from one side and as the front end that is directly created for creators, uh, for, for the artistic guys as, as our own like convention for this protocol. That's why we have the Rarity token uh, as a governance token of the protocol. Well, you know this thing without gov with governance tokens. So DeFi basically, DeFi projects are mostly money marketplaces. So there is the supply side of money and the demand side of money. So somebody is borrowing something, somebody is lending out. Uh, it's, it's all supply and demand and the la uh, launch of governance tokens in DeFi um, and the DeFi community made a ton of sense because you're, it's the way to bootstrap your liquidity. You reward people who supply liquidity to your marketplace, money marketplace who put money and, and they, they receive this governance token and they, behind, they become behind the wheel of the platform. Uh, we, we expanded this idea even broader. So Rarible is the general marketplace like Amazon or Uber or Airbnb. All of them are general marketplace business models. And the liquidity in terms of marketplace is just the supply side and demand side. The creator comes to the marketplace where there are more buyers and the buyer will come to the marketplace where there are more sellers. That's why it's all interconnected and it's that's why it's very hard to grow the marketplace because once you have the most of the market, people are coming to you and, and they're coming to trade where the most of other people are. And so we applied uh, the broader scope of the, of the liquidity bootstrapping mechanism to Rarible. We created the, the Rare token and we reward people who trade on Rarible. So people uh, are, are, who are transacting who are making uh, volumes for buying and selling. We reward 75,000 rares each week to the, to the buyers and sellers uh, uh, proportionally to their volume. Um, that's why if you're active, if you made a lot of sales or if you wasn't the only one who made the sale this week, you receive your, your, your respectful portion of the reward and you will become the governor of the platform. So uh, the, the whole thing that we, we, the whole life of Rarible, we, we were uh, relying heavily on the community. Community tells us like, you, you got to guys to, to verify this person. You guys, you got to, to, to moderate this stuff or it's, it, it shouldn't be here. So community saw, sends us signals and we as a team uh, answering to those signals. That's, that's, that's a good model for now but we want to be decentralized. We want uh, to, to have less control over the platform and the community to have more control over the platform. That's why we created the Rare token and this stuff like verification, governance, uh, moderation, uh, all of this distribution of Rare will be, will be gradually given in the power of the community of Rare holders. That creates this positive feedback loop. You came to increase the platform, you receive uh, a control over it. So it's, it's the community ownership of the platform. It, it's, it's a very powerful idea. Uh, there are several VC funds that operate under the thesis that the next set of successful companies like Amazon, Google, Apple will be built upon this foundational uh, community ownership of the platform. This is, this is a very powerful idea that, that, that was invented here in blockchain. And it will be, uh, so there won't be any, any particular person responsible for the success or failure. It's a network. Everybody on the network is responsible for its future. It's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love how you just described that and just, uh, Thinking while you talk, you know, I'm just thinking about a couple of things of how how that could change everything because 
apart from the positive feedback loop, you're literally, it's like a, it's like a positive incentive to continue to create. It's like the more you create, the more, the more you buy in proportion, you could earn um, more Rari tokens, you know, similar to, to Uniswap, you know, the people that used Uniswap on multiple accounts, you know, they got a, a good amount of uh, reward. And I love how you contrasted that with like, even outside of crypto, because I think you're definitely right. When when the Uniswap event happened, uh, people were already uh, talking about, uh, you know, how things like Coinbase, right? I use Coinbase, I use the Coinbase wallet. Actually, I have some of my uh, NFTs on there, but, you know, just kind of off topic here, but I'm gonna bring it back. Um, like with Coinbase going public, potentially, a lot of people were talking about, you know, are they going to, try to reward those early people. And I think that is one missing element that traditional uh, finance companies, anyone just don't have, right? They haven't figured out an efficient way to reward those um, or, or early people, early loyal uh, customers or, or even users. So I think we should definitely continue down this path of what you all are encouraging which is rewarding the early members that, that use your platform, like even outside blockchain and crypto. But I think if we, if we do that, we'll get more mainstream people to come into the space because uh, it just builds more bridges. And it, I think it, it, you, get this crazy, uh, you get this crazy exponential growth of, of creation, which I think is another really cool thing. You know, I've seen a lot of other uh, art places or NFT uh, marketplaces, but they're only a marketplace. They don't have any of the other elements uh, that you just mentioned. So 100% uh, your community, I think is very dedicated, very strong. And you're right, that basically is your network. Um, you know, there's been a lot of rise around people buying NFTs and there's been a lot of people using DeFi. Do you have any thoughts on, you know, the future of like crazy ideas like now earning interest on your nft um do you wh what do you what do you think about that do you think that's more so on the DeFi craze or do you actually think there is uh valid use cases uh in some of the things you mentioned you know for example maybe if you own a piece of art and traditionally the art can go up in value maybe i don't really understand this concept of how you would lend your art but maybe you do. So yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on that. Maybe you can explain it better for our uh, viewers out there. Let me try. So the way I see NFTs as any other asset, you own something, it's valuable, there is a price for it. So there must be a value in, inside it. If there is a value inside it, then somebody else could probably want to have that value even for a time. So let's say decentralized. You own a place, you own 10, 10 lands, 10 parcels in the central land. And you only built one office. And you're thinking uh, that, okay, the central land is a cool platform. It will be bigger, it will be more popular. Probably I want to have this land and I want to sit in my wallet for some time until, until somebody else wants to build an office and, and buy it from me. What you can do meanwhile, you can allow somebody else to build an office on your land. And what would your motivation be for that? You probably want to have some interest on, since you're or owner of the land. So um, there is no like built-in mechanism for now to, to do that. So you, you, can't, you can give somebody your, your, your land just to use it. You probably, you only can give it out the whole. But what you can actually do, you can take some, um, let's say your land costs $1,000. You can take $5,000 as a collateral. Okay, you give me $5,000 and I give you my land. If you give me my land back, I give you your money back. So this, what that happened is the lending of NFTs backed by the USD collateral. Awesome, so NFT is a building block. It will merge with DeFi. Uh, we know the people who are doing this right now with so rare game. So there are, it's a football game. You, you, you can assemble a team and probably sometimes you want to see a single uh, player from that game to be in your team 
uh, but this player belongs to somebody else. So you want to rent out this player and to play with him in your team. Again, you can put some money as a collateral and to use it and, and use this NFT for a while. Again, the same model, uh, you, you earn interest on your NFT and there will be project that would do that. Another model is, is backwards. Imagine you have a crypto kitty that cost $10,000 and it will, it will cost more in the future probably. And right now you just suddenly in that and you need and you need to cover some some outside uh, I don't know, some some you need to pay some bills. What you can do is you can land it as a you can you can let it uh, you can give it to somebody as a collateral and and land and borrow a thousand dollars with with this NFT as collateral. So it's all interconnected. It's a thing that has value. You can give it to somebody and you can borrow again. And backwards, you, you can give it as a collateral or, or you can uh, give it out and take money as a collateral. So this, this interest bearing NFT is everything. So interest bears, uh, it's, it's just a concept that occurs whenever there is a value behind it. If, if somebody needs to use your money, they pay you interest. If somebody needs to use your NFT, they pay you interest. That's the whole idea. Yeah, I mean, when I first saw NFTs, and I think even just talking to you right now, it's kind of changed my perspective on what it, what it is that's actually important. I think many people focus too much on the actual art or the actual image, but um, you know, I think people should really listen to what you're saying because it opens the door to so many more use cases, so many more companies. And that's why I think we've seen companies like, uh, or, or rather organizations like the NBA, um, and also many football teams that are now actually introducing collectibles, the ability to, uh, uh, what's the word, like fantasy football type of things where you can own a player and, uh, and, and rate their performance. So uh, do you think do you think that uh, we'll see more organizations kind of use NF like can they use NFTs, let's say, or even any collectibles to increase uh, their loyalty, like loyalty points? Because I was talking to a couple of other speakers and that's one thing that we were discussing, you know, companies like uh, Bakht and Lolly, they are working with the retailers and the merchants to try to um, incentivize his purchase purchases, but that's just the payment layer. What what you're talking about is uh, you're actually trying to incentivize people to not only create but actually hold specific collectibles, increase um, uh, the liqu the liquidity and just the, the transaction of that. So, do you think it can be used as a tool to um, you know increase loyalty and how how we uh, kind of reshape how we think about like loyalty and uh, and rewards points like what if you got rewarded with let's say a type of nft from a football club or another organization and uh with uh with things like the nba right you can actually own a specific type of uh video a specific moment then you can either keep it and maybe it goes up in value like years later or you can actually uh trade it out so i want to just kind of get your uh, viewpoints before we end things off and, and uh, get to know you better but well i definitely want to get your viewpoints uh, on this because I, I think it's huge stuff right these are huge companies it's not just uh, it's not just art awesome so let me try to unpack this when you when you talk about loyalty points how does this usually work on uh, so I've seen several good examples of that. Let's say bankless subscription. It gives you an NFT when you subscribe to the paid version of that. So there is a just, it's an email subscription. It has a paid version. You can subscribe, you can pay some, I don't remember how much. And you would receive this like paid NFT badge for paying to that. So what happens next, you instantly associate yourself with the uh, with this um, bankless uh, community. And what's more, other people on the network can see that, that you are the paid uh, member of, of bankless subscription. 
Uh, we even had this idea when BZX, BZX created their own token. They, they, were, they were proposing to airdrop the token to the bankless community. So uh, it's, isn't this, this awesome? I think defined subscription has more or less the same. Uh, so, so there is a badge, okay, I paid it. I, pay, I paid it to somebody. So it's a public signal that, that you are, are a member of some community. Um, there is an unlock protocol that allows you to create NFTs that would be, that would serve as keys to, to access something. So I think the ultimately loyalty NFTs lay in the foundation that uh, this association. So there, there is an image, there is a product, and when you, when you, when you use it, you, you receive some, some, some NFT badge on top, and, and you start to associate yourself with the community, and other people know that you are associated. This is the idea behind. So it's not an asset class. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to transfer that badge. So okay, no. Now you're in the community. It doesn't work like this. So, so NFT badges are, are a very powerful tool again. So it, it's just a signal, but you need to construct them the right way. Um, they, they're probably non-transferable and it, or it doesn't make sense to transfer them. Yeah, I got it. I mean, I honestly didn't even think of NFT badges and I, I don't really know too much about the things going on with it, but I think after talking to you, I definitely want to check some of those things out more because I'm always interested now in, you know, I, I like things like DeFi, but I think some of these other important things that we're talking about today, you might see those use cases come out first. And honestly, they might be more easier to, to understand than, uh, you know, let, trying to lend just for one example on some of these crazy complicated DeFi platforms. It's much more digestible for someone to understand the improvement of receiving something uh, like a badge. Um, so that's, I think that's another key from this uh, for what I want people to take away. Everything Alexander's talking about, I think he touched on a lot of great points about basically the improvement um, and as to why those will be successful compared to uh, just the way traditional things work. A lot of these things, you can't even do them traditionally or they're just so horrible that no one does them. There's no community around it. Um, to kind of end things off, I want to kind of get to know you better. So uh, can you tell everyone, you know, in your time that you've been in the, involved in the crypto space, what is the spookiest or scariest story you have um, or something that still scares you uh, every day? Uh, it's a Halloween time. So let me go with, with this one. Probably we have a lot of scary stories. Most of them, like what's the most scary story for, for the crypto market? It's probably losing money. And uh, I do remember my feelings when there was a parity hack. So uh, when, when the project, some prominent projects, uh, lost something like 100 million dollars worth of ETH out of the problem in the contract. And this was really scary. So it's just, it's not the random guy on the internet who, who did something wrong with his private key. It's not uh, that somebody paid a less attention. It's just a human factor in, on scale. So somebody, I, I do even remember how the, the picture that w went viral after that. So uh, some person went on the Git, uh, I don't know, like Git chat, or uh, what, what was the name of, of the chats that on GitHub basically attached to the repositories. So somebody got into this chat and said, uh oh, it looks like I, I might mess up with something. So uh, I, I deleted something on, on blockchain. So that was just the, the developer who was testing things out, who was just calling, calling the contracts, methods of them. And he was, okay, there is a delete method. Like I, I surely shouldn't be able to delete the contract that somebody else deployed. And it turned out there was no, there was no production from that. And I do remember this answer, okay, guy, everybody hates you now, but you're kind of famous. Uh, I, don't, I don't know like, what, what's going on with this person right now, but this is probably the scariest uh, thing that, that can be here, that 
someday we all woke up and, and, and see that, oh, there was a major like exploit in the network. Somebody got this, this, this way to, to get into the system and we, we will all be very sorry about that. Probably there will be hard fork rolling things back as it was with Bitcoin, some like back then, uh, somebody was able to to create any Bitcoin, any, any number of Bitcoins as he wanted, uh, and it, it was rolled back with the hard work, uh, all good. But but some people like uh, suffer it. So this is probably the, what what scares me the most in the crypto community. But in the end, it's all public. It it will be more resilient with time. Yeah, you've definitely seen some some scary things in your time in the crypto community, but. You know, we're glad to have you working on very important projects uh, and glad to have you uh, in, in our side in the community. So, Alexander, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'd encourage everyone to buy some NFTs. Definitely check out Rarible and, and some other platforms. Uh, I'm your host, Roshan Marashkar again, and I'll let you all tune back in to Reimagine 2020 before. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Roshan. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a real pre pleasure to talk to you.